This is the lecture on statistics used in assessment in special education. My name is Dr. George Giuliani from Hofstra University, and this is part five and the last part of our lecture. And we'll be talking about a concept known as correlations. Now, a correlation is not a statistic, but a correlation is something that you'll see often in the literature when you're reading uh, about statistics used in assessment in special education, and therefore you need to understand what a correlation is. Now, correlations tell us the relationship between two variables. When you think of correlations, you think of the relationship between two variables. And there are three types of correlations. Positive correlations, negative correlations, and zero correlations. Positive, negative, and zero. The first of the three types of por uh, correlations are, is known as a positive correlation. <coughs> Excuse me. And variables are said to be positively correlated when a high score on one variable is accompanied by a high score on the other. And conversely, a low score on one variable is accompanied by a low score on the other. In a sense, there is what we call a direct relationship between the variables. So as one variable goes up, the other one goes up. Or as one variable goes down, the other one goes down. There's a direct relationship. And when you think of examples of positive correlations, IQ and academic achievement are positively correlated. As IQ scores go up, academic achievement goes up. Education and, and income. As education levels of individuals go up, income goes up. Depression and anxiety. As depression increases, anxiety increases. And again, these work the other way. As depression decreases, anxiety decreases. Again, as one variable increases, the other one increases. Or as one variable decreases, the other one decreases. They both go in the same direction. Another example of a positive correlation, hours spent studying and grade point average. Again, the more hours a person spends studying, the higher the grade point average of that individual. And the evaluated stress levels of individuals and blood pressure readings. Think about it. The higher your stress level, the higher your blood pressure reading. Now, negative correlations happen when a high score on one variable is accompanied by a low score on the other. Uh, conversely, a low score on one variable is accompanied by a high score on the other. In a sense, as one variable increases, the other one decreases. As one goes up, the other goes down, and therefore there is an indirect relationship between the variables. <clears throat> Examples of negative correlations, teacher stress and job satisfaction. As teacher stress levels go up, job satisfaction goes down. Student anxiety and student performance. As students anxiety levels go up, student performance tends to go down. Pages printed and printer ink supply. As the number of pages printed goes up, printer ink supply goes down. And the amount of exercise individuals do and the percentage of body fat. The more exercise people do, the less body fat that they have. As one goes up, the other goes down. Zero correlations. Now, a zero correlation represents no relationship between the variables. That when you look at the two variables, there's no relationship between the variables. For example, foot size and GPA. So as people's foot size increase, GPA it doesn't do anything. The points would be all over the place. Uh, weight and IQ score. As weight goes up in people, what happens to their IQ scores? Well, nothing happens. The points will be all over the place. doesn't matter um, whether you're underweight, at average weight, above weight. Um, it has no impact on IQ score. So zero correlations, no relationship between the variables. Now, correlations are expressed by a correlation coefficient. Okay, you'll, you'll never have to calculate this, but you just need to understand it. And correlations are represented by lowercase r. Lowercase r, and they can range from negative one up to positive one, negative one up to positive one. And the rule is very straightforward. The closer you get to either negative one or positive one, the stronger the relationship. The closer you get to zero, the weaker the relationship or the weaker the correlation. So the sign only tells you the relationship between the variables, the number tells you the strength. So the closer you get to positive one or the closer you get to negative one, the stronger the relationship, the closer you get to zero, the weaker the relationship, with of course zero being the weakest relationship, no relationship at all between the variables. So again, the sign, positive or negative, don't let that confuse you as something good or not good. 
sign only tells you whether it's a positive correlation or a negative correlation. It only tells you the type of relationship. It's the number that tells you the strength. So for example, a correlation coefficient of negative 0.95 tells you that you have a negative correlation and it's a very strong negative correlation because 0.95 is very close to 1. But a correlation of positive 0.11, it tells you that there's a positive correlation, but it's a very weak correlation because again, 0.1 is much closer to 0. So take a look at this example. Which correlation is stronger, positive 0.35 or negative 0.76? Well, the answer would be negative 0.76 because although it's negative, that just represents this, uh, the type of correlation. It has nothing to do with its strength. The strength lies in the number, and 0.76 is greater than 0.35. Positive 0.97 or negative 0.83? Positive 0.97 is your stronger correlation. And finally, negative 0.44 correlation or positive 0.25? Again, negative 0.4 would be the stronger correlation because 0.44 is greater than 0.25. And then finally, perhaps the most important point of all with correlations is that correlations by themselves never indicate cause and effect. Correlations by themselves do not tell you whether one thing causes another thing to occur. Just because two variables are correlated does not mean that one causes the other one to occur. Doesn't mean that it doesn't, but it doesn't tell you that it does. So when you see a correlation between variables, you don't know whether one causes the other one to occur. So for example, there's a strong positive correlation between depression and anxiety. Okay, as depression goes up, anxiety goes up. But is it that being depressed causes someone to be anxious? Or is it that being anxious causes someone to be depressed? The correlation doesn't tell you that. So all you know with the correlation is the relationship between the variables. It does not ever indicate a cause and effect relationship. This ends the lecture on correlations. It also ends the lecture on uh, statistics used in assessment in special education. You should have completed parts one through five and the lecture at this time is now done.